when you're building on a Next.js application and you opt into using server actions, whenever you make that request in your code to call an action, remember that that's just an abstraction behind a API post request. So like when I actually submitted that form, that's invoking a server action, which does a post request to an endpoint. And because this is just an API endpoint, technically anyone can come in here, copy this as curl, modify it, and they can hit your server action and do whatever they want to it. Because of that, there is a library that I'm starting to use in all my Next.js applications, and that is called Next Safe Action. And I'm gonna walk you through how you can get this set up in your Next.js application. I do think it helps your code become a lot more secure, and it has Zod built in out of the box, so that's also a, a bonus. It makes it easier to write your actions and not have to worry about doing a bunch of additional configuration. So in that example that I just showed you, I have a create group form, and you'll see down here that when I submit this form, I'm calling a create group action. Let's just go ahead and look at this file and try to understand what this action is doing. So if we look at this action, you'll see that I have a create group action function defined. I'm passing in some schema here, and I'm actually sharing the schema between the front end and the back end, because I do do some client side validation. If I go back over here, and create a group. If I create this group button, you'll notice that validation comes up and this is all client side because I'm using React uh, use hook form and it already has built-in validation and stuff like that. And so I have this validation file where I have a schema to find. I'm sharing that between the front and the back end so I can have that nice user experience. The way next safe action works is you basically pass it the schema of what you want it to parse the, uh, the payload that comes over when someone were to submit the form. And then additionally, you pass it a function where you can run your normal server action code. Now I will state I made my own wrapper function. So if I look at this authenticated action, I'm actually using next safe action to create this client function where I can attach a middleware. So basically every time I use an authenticated action, it's going to look up the user and make sure that the session is defined. And if it's not, it throws an error. So off the bat, I have this nice convenient way to like verify that the actions I'm writing are always going to be uh, requiring some type of authentication. And then that gets passed in over here from this middleware function. It gets passed a user object and that gets passed in for context. So now I have access to the user information in all my actions and there's a lot less boilerplate code I have to write in all my actions. The second thing I want to point out is this create safe action client. Again, that's just a function that comes from next safe action. And the way that you can kind of use this is you pass it the information you want, you can configure your function kind of how you need it to, and then you get back this other function. This is kind of like a factory function that returns a function, and that's what I'm using over here. So the way I'm using this action in this form is I'm just kind of calling the action and then doing some logic, and then I'm redirecting back to the dashboard. But there is a helper function inside of next safe action that I'll kind of talk about that's very useful as well. So they have some hooks. If you wanted to do this in a client side uh, component, they have this hook called use action. And once you invoke it, you basically pass it your server action here. And then you get back an execute function that you can call when you like click a button. You also get back a result. So if like the backend throws an error or if the backend throws some type of validation errors, that'll be attached to that result object you can hide and show different validation logic and error messages based on that result that remember under the hood zod's just being used to validate the payload that gets passed in right it's parsing the payload so in my application i am using this for the newsletter again i have a subscribe email action if i look at this this is using the unauthenticated action same idea though i pass in a schema um, it has a rate limiter set in by ip and then i basically add that email address to my database but if for some reason someone were to hit this endpoint with like Postman or, you know, maybe I had a bug in my UI where the email wasn't being validated client side, what would happen is that result gets sent back. And you'll see that we have result.server error. That's one thing you have access to. Additionally, you have access to result.validation error. So if for whatever reason email was not properly set, I can display some other type of, you know, alerts or error messages based on that. Oh, I guess the very last thing I'll point out is that when you use this use action hook, you can pass it an options object here and you can actually change what happens when this stuff is successfully ran. So in my case, when I call execute down here when the form submitted, I can run a form reset here on success. I can show a toast. And then also if there's an error, you can do some other things as well. 
I'll put this link in the video description if you want to check it out yourself. I think it's pretty cool. And this is, by the way, what I'm going to be using in my WDC starter kit. Go to WDCstarterkit.com if you want to subscribe to my newsletter. I'm working on a starter kit where you can launch a SaaS product yourself. I'm going to have a lot of documentation, tutorials, and video guides that kind of walk you through how to set up all the different third-party services so that you can actually launch your SaaS product to production and iterate on it with a lot of the things I have learned over the years. So yeah, check that out and also check out Next Safe Actions. That's about it. Have a good day and happy coding.